Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Smudcast number 770 in defense of modern Star Wars. This is, uh, I mean, this is almost a decade after The Force Awakens. So I don't know if the movies are considered modern anymore, but I'm assuming that this YouTuber by the name of Narf Boy is going to talk about the Disney Plus series, maybe some of the animated stuff. I don't know yet. We're going to find out. Anyway. Uh, this was published one month ago. has about 7,000 views or more than 7,000 views. And his channel is fairly small. He's under 1,000 subs. So we have to be nice to him in some ways, depending on his argument. We're giving him some leeway. But uh, we're going to be as critical as we usually are with these kinds of people, especially Star Wars because it's such a big, big universe. Lots of people are arguing about it every other week. And I, it's not going away. Disney Plus or Disney has not killed it. It is still an IP they wield. And uh, you know, part of my attention is just like, yeah, we've been there, we've seen this, but people talk about Andor still. People talk about the animated stuff still. So maybe there's some value to be had. Maybe he has a point. Maybe he has a good argument. I don't know. I've only watched about 10 seconds of the video, and I thought, okay, we'll give him, we'll give him a chance. We'll see what he has to say. Ah, Anyway, um, 25 minutes, almost 25 minutes. This will take some time. So here we go. I think we're all together in the watch together. Gingaman is still not here, but that's okay. He'll pop in eventually. Or not. That That is also a possibility. <laughs> all right. Hopefully, bearing no weather patterns. It was, it was rainy and windy all this week. It's a little sunny right now. Hopefully, nothing's going to blow over my uh, my cable connection. So anyway, let's start. Also, Smud, before we begin, uh, you said it's been a decade, Force Awakens since 2016, so nearly a decade. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. All right, okay, we can continue. Okay, so there's something I'm wanting to talk about, or more so rant about recently. As many uh -oh. of you obviously couldn't tell, I am a huge Star Wars fan and have been a huge fan for most of my life. For as long as I can remember, I've been watching all the newest Star Wars shows and movies, and don't even ask me about my Lego Star Wars collection. One thing I have to admit, though, is that Star Wars has been in a rough state recently, and it seems like many people have lost hope for the franchise for many reasons, whether that be because of the questionable writing, bad dialogue, even worse choreography, or the toxic fandom. Oh, okay, so he's admitting that there's a lot of problems with the movies. I don't like the mention of the toxic fandom unless he's just relating to what he's heard from others. These are things like toxic masculinity, in other words, or phrases that you degrade your your opponent or your people who you disagree with in the same group. And I, I don't think this is a thing. I've never encountered a toxic fan. I've encountered fans yeah. I disagree with, and for many reasons, but their behavior is not exactly um, causing me to think their way so I think poorly like them. I never yeah, understood this toxicity last, concept before. Yeah, I don't the know last toxic, example what? is is relevant that that examples are given. Yeah. Um, because there are there are such things. Um, with what, what was what was the thing where the fa I think it was Steven Universe where uh, the fans harassed and bullied a uh, one of the the writers into depression and suicide really i know the fandom bullied a one of the fans who was a child because they didn't like her fan art yeah and yeah the, yes yeah, they bullied yeah, a yeah. young girl into attempting suicide twice because they didn't like her fan art so yes they're absolutely oh, that was another thieves. there was that must have been another instance uh, so these things do happen and it is um ironic well it is ironic if you don't know uh, how these people function uh but it is always these SJW types that do this, the ones that call everything and everyone toxic, they are actually the toxic ones. They are projecting this. So the use of this term kind of backfires because we don't know if, if you agree that the writing is bad and the choreography is bad and many other aspects, then what do you mean with the toxic part? Because it's the people who call everything and everyone toxic, who excuse all of these other things. I mean, yeah. There are 
probably are toxic Star Wars fans. I've never encountered one. That doesn't mean there aren't. There yeah, some, they're the pseudo fans. I, I'm just. Yeah, they're, they're, that doesn't mean there isn't some dickhead out there who's going to call you a moron <laughs> or degrade you because you like or dislike a Star Wars property they have the contrarian opinion to. But that's just a standard childishness I, I that exists everywhere. I would just yeah, say. Yeah, like, you're, you're going to have that. That's just par for the course. Yeah, I would just say these are people on, on Twitter, as usual, just voicing whatever disagreement because they disagree with you on a small point and therefore you're crazy or weird or stupid and I don't think they'll berate you for saying, that. Yeah, I don't think saying toxic fan was necessarily the right thing to say. It's not entirely wrong, but I think a better way to phrase it would have been our dickheads on Twitter. Okay, fair enough. Like, just be more general with what you're explaining rather than saying toxic fan for your little buzzword. Yeah, that's why I, I, I did not like... Of... Well, honestly, yeah, the, the word... The word toxic has honestly been so overused, it's basically lost a lot of meaning. No, it never had meaning. Yeah. I, In the sense it, that, that it was used, it never had meaning because it was always a projection it's from one of those, the very start. It's one of those buzzwords that just kept being used. And it, we first heard it with toxic masculinity. And I was like, what is that even? I still don't know exactly what that means. And even the definition. That's just it just is masculinity. It's just oh things yeah. that we don't like from masculinity from a from a feminist perspective or some, something like that. Which is everything. Which <laughs> which what they describe as the toxic masculinity isn't masculinity, but a toxic lack of masculinity. It's a lack of maturity, is what they were describing. All right, well, not even that. They just no fe feminists are man haters. E either Plain way, the, they hate men. The, the concept of, of a, a toxic fandom is just people who, when I heard the term, was people who did not like episode seven eight and nine and they criticized them and the people who do like star wars at that time said oh you're just a hater you're just a this or that and that's all i saw it as that's that's what the term meant to me so him using the term he could just be reporting the facts that he heard that's fine or maybe he is somebody just speaking who always generally of just passionate about anything assholes on twitter wars. Allow me to try to convince you that there is still hope for Star Wars despite these recent shortcomings. And I think the best place... To and just to finish this off, we've been having this bullshit going on for five to ten years now. You don't need to make excuses for this term. That's just doing the job of the activists for them by minimizing what they do. There are no excuses. These are just horrible people who project and lie right. and slap. If you're if you're going to defend Star Wars, defend the content because I'm sure there are good parts of episodes seven to nine. I've I've pointed them out, and I'm sure there's good shows out there that can't all be crap. So if you want to defend those elements, great, that's fantastic. And this guy might do that. I don't know. So there is a there is an argument to be made. Is what I'm saying. And yes, it's cherry picking, and yes, it's it's saying this is good, this is bad, but that's what we're doing. We know it's bad. We we've seen the bad. We've we've sat through years of this stuff of people talking about how bad it is. So let's focus on the good. Maybe maybe he's got some insight. That'd be good. Thon, the reasons people hate. Now, when I ask what Star Wars fans hate the most, the answer that I think would pop up in most people's heads is the sequel trilogy. For many obvious reasons. This entire trilogy was so disjointed and heavily lacked a vision. I don't understand why they had to have Ryan Johnson write and direct The Last Jedi. The Force Awakens was a decent start to the sequel trilogy and it was a sequel because, trilogy. Because, because, way be, more because Kathleen Kennedy wanted more feminism. I mean, you already had that in The Force Awakens. It when wasn't enough. Awakens, I mean, The Force Awakens well, is a decent enough movie, but because of just how much of a clusterfuck Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker is, there is no reason to watch the Disney trilogy. Yeah, and what had the, potential was destroyed. Yeah, um, really, Abrams already really, kind of fucked up because he's a he's an incompetent hack. But then it was made worse. He asked the question, "Why Ryan Johnson? Why fuck it up?" And Kathleen yeah. Kennedy gave the answer. She wanted more feminism. The right, force is right. female. Exactly. Right, but anyways, but anyways, but yeah, like even, but yeah, even if that's not the answer, the official and whisper, not saying uh, you're wrong, I do think feminism played a part in this, and Brian Johnson is willing to do whatever Kathleen Kennedy wants him to do because, you know, he's a purse puppy like that. The official reason, like, basically you, why... You don't know what purse puppy means. 
isn't it like a like a like a good little boy who does whatever uh, the woman tells him to? I mean, kind of. No, it's something. It's something you carry around to present. That look how awesome and, and cute a thing I have. Okay, well, I just have a different definition then. Anyways, my point is, is that the reason why they went from Abrams and then to Johnson is because Disney basically wanted to treat Star Wars the same way they treat the MCU. Just get a bunch of different directors, have them basically work Where on... Where did they say uh, that? Well, I, well, it, well, it was... I read it somewhere. I can't remember where... But it, they basically, well, it, all right, here, let me phrase it this way. They basically wanted to have the tr sequel trilogy be a giant game of round robin, basically. This so is the JJ, first time I'm hearing this. Okay, well, J.J. was to write The Force Awakens, Ryan Johnson was to do um, The Last Jedi, and Colin Trevorrow was to do uh, Rise of Skywalker, basically. And... They drop the ball because you can't really do that. With they the can't. Single... They can't change that after Ryan Johnson already made a pitch for all three movies and set it up in the first. Well, yeah, but yeah, it's like they can't really do that because you can't do that with a with a story like Star Wars. Star Wars isn't really like the MCU where you can have one director give his own take. You need. A, no, of course a you could super... do this. Of course you could do well, this. This is the. the... The, well, um, the no, the original trilogy, the original I, trilogy I know, worked I'm, much worked, worked much like that. It wasn't done well, all by by the same team, by the same heads. Well, I mean, and it I was mean, amazing. The problem I is mean, that these heads are idiots, and they are not I team mean, players. With, with, I mainly mean that you need a single guy. No, you don't. The creative force. I mean, no, you don't. George, wasn't Lu wasn't George, George Lucas? That is how we got the behind the original trilogy. That is well, no. Well, that, it, it, that is the problem that we have with the prequels because that is how Lucas fucked it all up. Well, yeah, but, well, yeah, well, yeah, but, it, but that's but that's because Lucas had, was trying to do was trying to do a lot of things outside his wheelhouse. But either way, no, it's also because he had that, nobody who was courageous enough to tell him, George, uh, that yeah, doesn't uh, work. Uh, yeah, he surrounded yeah, himself yeah, with yes, yes men. That. Yeah, I but agree the, with that. I agree with no, that. Well, that, that is that is. I think that was inevitable due to his, his legendary status. The thing is rather that your, your argument doesn't work. It doesn't need that one guy. You can run that, but it needs to be a competent guy who's all around competent. When you have the writer-director combination in one person, that usually leads to disaster. In regards when you to... then also fuck this up with absolutely horrible characters... It get it just gets worse. In regards to the uh, Trevorrow script, it was leaked in 2016 in a PDF that he it was called the Duel of the Fates or something like that, and yeah, yeah the, the year later he got fired, so they had to get someone else to do it. I don't know why he got fired, but th this just implies that he was hired to write a script. They didn't like it, so he's not cleaning it up. He's not directing. He's not doing any other work. So therefore, they don't need him anymore. So. <laughs> I think another. I think another part Trevorrow left is because it's like Ryan Johnson basically gave him nothing to work with. Like I can't do anything with this. I'm piecing out. I'm going back to Jurassic World. <laughs> oh, and Jim. we we see how that turned out. Uh, yeah. So there's so lots of. I wouldn't of, uh... expect much of of the Star Wars thing he would have made anyway. Yeah. All right. Also, they didn't plan it out in advance. That was another reason. Yeah. Abrams had it planned out in advance, at least roughly. Yeah. And, and then they like, messed well, with well, that because well, Ryan well, Johnson well, came out. He was just thrown in. If I can make a single change that would make the, the Force Awakens a better movie, rather than having Rey do the mind trick, have Finn save her, and then she can still pull the lightsaber and still look back into Kylo's mind, and that's enough to show she's Force sensitive. You know, so she still has. Yeah, to but we don't need to. We don't need to talk about fixing those fucking movies here. That's that's a waste yeah, of time. I don't see any way to fix Last Jedi. It's imp they're all unfixable. It's ten years and it's ten years later. I just want yeah. this decanonized, as I said, two weeks after seeing uh, um, um, the Last Jedi in, in the cinema. I will say. Uh... I came, I, I, that's why I came to the conclusion: this is unfixable. This needs to be decanonized, and it will within 10 years. We, we, have, we are nearing that point. We have had many YouTubers, including myself, who did write the uh, fixes for episode 7 and 8, and then we just sort of looked at 9 and went, mm, there's no point. So, uh, Matthew Kadish is one of them I remember. Anyway, uh, let's continue. 
more since Abrams directed the entire trilogy. But no, they had to have Ryan Johnson come in and ruin what could have been an actually consistent trilogy. These movies were such a disgrace to George Lucas's legacy and metaphorically spat on all Roughly consistent if you turn off your brain, but even internally, JJ's movie was not internally consistent. Also, that's the key word right there, ruin. Well, characters that were written so well before that. Yeah. I was going to say, even Lucas's script for what he wanted as a sequel was was childish to the point of just being bad science fiction. So mm -hmm. I don't think Lucas would have done a worse job, but he wouldn't have done a good job. It would have been like, okay, you've reduced midichlorians to the wills, and now it's just this thing that controls the universe, and we have no understanding of it. It's just, thanks, George. Yeah. That's great. I think he would have, I don't think as bad, but uh, it's it's not, it's, it's still, it would still be in a negative, but oh, I yeah. wouldn't say it's this level of inconsistent and destructive, it would just be meh. It, it would and be... Uh, is this his avant-garde artistic nonsense? It would be the flashy uh, lights and, and keychain dangling in front of a cat. Yeah, it's it would be pretty, but oh my goodness, this is not the Star Wars you wanted. He'd, he'd give us the, the uh, Odyssey 2001 ending. The dangling ah. keychains is, for me, is a perfect analogy of the uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh. And it's basically that. Just look at this, look at this. How pretty. Yeah. You remember that? Absolute garbage movies. Point. What happened to the Luke Skywalker we all knew, loved, and looked up to? Is he safe? Is he all right? Uh, that was answered in episode eight. No, he's a bitter, jaded old man. Just like Mark Hamill is a bitter, jaded old man. It is also so disappointing to think about how dirty Finn was done as a character. He was hyped up to be such an interesting character, being a stormtrooper who was supposed to become a Jedi. Instead, he was just tossed aside like everything else with potential in this damn trilogy. Well, it was with yep. That's because it doesn't sell in China. Uh, well, I was going to say, mm -hmm. just like, like Phasma, they have these characters that they introduce and they don't use them to any extent. So they're like background information or they kill them off for the sake of killing them off. And yeah, that's a waste. It is a waste of time and a waste of our attention, unfortunately. Also, it happens when you hire hacks for an ideology. Also, Seraph, to specify he, that he spe he specifically doesn't sell in China, Finn. Yeah. Okay. All they did was give Rey some terrible writing and make her the main focus of the entire trilogy. And for the record, I don't hate on Rey just because she is a woman. I only hate on characters when they are written poorly. Examples of female characters in Star Wars who were written well are Ahsoka, Leia, and Jyn Erso, Leia. just to name a few. You know why uh, you never Jyn Erso seen... was kind of bland. Leia? I mean, she's, I mean, she's, well, Jyn doesn't have to be that interesting. She's a one-off character. She dies in the end, so it doesn't really matter. She's that complex. About... No, you well, can write it. That is exactly when you write a character so compelling that you care. Jyn Erso was not someone you cared about because she was written bland and boring and arrogant. She was a, she was a girl boss. You do not. Nobody cares about girl bosses. I the droid was better written. The droid was better written than her. Yes, I cared about the droid dying. I didn't care about the humans dying I mean, the because the humans were all boring and forgettable. I droid was freaking was hilarious. Droid, droid gets shot. You think it's him? Then he comes up from the background. Did you know that wasn't me? Uh, <laughs> that's such a, that's a the same way moment. I would I would I would mourn HK forty seven dying, even though he wants to genocide all biological creatures, because he's an amazing character. Well, he referenced Leia Organa, which I assume meant the original trilogy, not the sequels. So mm -hmm. he showed they a picture. Made her like yeah, some military used the old contractor picture. or something. I think that was, I think that's what they did with her. Uh, I still like, wonder what the original cut of the Rogue like, One looked like. Yeah, yeah. Like some resistance military. Leader. It was also I real I'm really beginning to doubt this man's. Um, how, how much of a Star Wars fan this guy is, because he only what? lists off characters from the movies. It's like, bro, where are any of the EU ladies? No, that's Either because way. that's because first hand that is irrelevant. Well, st well still, there's still. I, a I do not Star question. Wars. I do not question at this point his level of being a fan. 
Well, well, I mean, if he says he's a fan, I expect him to know who they are. But either way, yeah. Why, why would he list like them at this in... point when he's when he's still talking about the movies? Uh... This is the thing about modern about modern Star Wars first. So the first thing we that you talk about is the mainline stuff that exists, which is the movies. After that, you can talk about the games and other shows and books. I think this is the game. This is, what, what is this on the screen right now? Obviously, it's a Star Wars uh, game. That's Battlefront. That's EA Battlefront right. 2. Right. Okay. I hate for the because their writers had a brain for storytelling. Ooh. But back to my main point. The only intriguing things about the sequel trilogy to me were Snoke and Kylo Ren. And they killed off Snoke so easily when he had so much potential to be a good villain. And they killed Kylo at the end of the trilogy. So yeah, there goes all of that. Also, I feel like the only semi-creative planet used in the sequels was Crate. If there's anything at all to appreciate... And that was only for this shot, because writers like Johnson, writers, directors like Johnson and Abrams, <clears throat> they do not write their movies for a good story or for good characters. What they do is... They have a few cool ideas of cool looking shots. They have this 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 visual vision, if you will. And then they write every scene just to get somehow to that to that cool looking one. And that is why JJ Abrams movies are just disjointed garbage that is just flashy cool looking scene, flashy cool looking scene. He's an okay director for the visual stuff you can say a similar thing about ryan johnson but this is an illness of hollywood where they only do this this crap that's why it never turns out well and we've seen a lot of this in in lots of modern writing in lots of modern movies um michael bay does a similar thing it's just cool shot cool shot cool shot the mandalorian no. does the same thing filoni has a or, or favreau i keep mixing up the two has this idea of, oh, I have this, there's this really cool shot, like like for episode four in Mandalorian, in the swamp, where the ATST stands on the other side of the swamp and, and, on the, and on the opposite side stand the villagers and the Mandalorian looking up. And it's like this, this, this caveman versus T-Rex shot with this really good atmosphere at dusk. Beautiful, beautiful shot. But the entire episode makes no bloody sense on and, and how they get there and how the bloody thing um, is destroyed. It, it is just pathetic. In defense but the shot itself Bay. looks amazing. In defense of Michael Bay, Wiz, I don't get the impression that Michael Nobody Bay, defends like, Michael Bay. Hey. Well, I mean, it's because... It's, I think it's mainly because it's like he knows that he's he knows he's like, like you know no one's showing up in my movies for the plot they're showing up because they want to see shit blow up big yes he knows that he other. knows that but they're still yeah, shit I mean, movies I mean yeah. that's fine just Either because guilty. you just because you deliver on the formula that people want doesn't mean that suddenly your I mean, stuff is good yeah but it the, just means you know I mean, how to sell your shit but the people who occasionally get a good movie but that's the exception not the rule yeah if I mean they're guilty your films at least exactly if you're if you're gonna make it good. if you're gonna buy a cheap hamburger from wherever and it's cheap hamburger and you know it's cheap the meat's not high quality it's probably very greasy mm -hmm. you're you're getting what you pay for and you know that and that's fine even if you know there's a filet mignon down the street you don't want a filet mignon right now that's totally fine you can go see a yeah. a transformers film and enjoy it that's great and with the with the choice of words that you just that you just uh, had a guilty pleasure is the definition of you enjoy something bad, which means Michael Bay's products are bad. That's fine. You, I'm not denying that. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong. Fine. There's nothing wrong with having a standard of quality that you are aware of, and you say, "I understand yeah. it," and that's totally cool. Like people like reading Harlequin romances. That's great. You enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with that. Fifty Shades of yeah, Grey should be burned. Oh yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> the most popular one should be okay. Yeah. Oh, look, it's, 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 it's making the it's as if you say, "Oh, uh, uh, Tommy Wiseau is not that bad." I have to defend him because I I have a guilty pleasure to enjoy the room. I'm pretty sure most of his. You know, I've never seen that movie. Oh jeez. Really? <laughs> I've never seen the room. I know it's god awful, should. but I've never seen the movie. You gotta see you it. Should. You should. Yeah. With a couple of friends. <laughs> Everyone tells me. <laughs> That, that's your homework for the weekend. It won't take won't take long yeah, to find it. Yeah, call in your friends, get a lot of beer, and enjoy. Yeah. 
Hit the rewind button several times, though. It's got to... Not oh, really yes. into beer. I'll drink whiskey like a civilized drunk. Okay. All right. Beautiful. I'll stick with my oh, lemonade. Right? It's the cinematography. Because, yeah, like, you're not allowed God to drink. damn, was the Battle of Crate visually amazing. Unlike the prequel trilogy, there has been almost nothing to expand upon the sequel trilogy except for Star Wars Resistance. But Ugh. who remembers that, right? I personally have watched Resistance, but I only did one time, and it was when I was taking a lot of pain meds after getting my wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't absolutely hate it. So we cannot oh, yeah, trust your judgment because you were under the influence. Funny. I'll say this. I saw an episode of Resistance because I liked Star Wars Clone Wars. I thought Rebels saw was okay. I thought Resistance might be good. It's not. It's terrible. The animation is terrible. The writing is terrible. The effects are terrible. It's just slow, boring, and doesn't go fucking anywhere. Yeah, you know, that's a recurring problem I've noticed too. Why are why are so many Star Wars TV shows that they so damn slow paced? Back when my back in my because day my Star Wars written. TV shows had war crimes. Because they are written by incompetent people for incompetent people. We already know the answer. That's all we talk about all the time for so when the can't just Force Awakens come out? Options. I think it's like some other reason. You only want to make excuses for all these assholes. Wait, so I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just trying to figure out, like, is there more than just one reason? No, they're just incompetent. <laughs> okay, yeah. fine. What? Well, it's just incompetent, and all the budget is thrown into making it look pretty rather than, you know, competent writing. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how much look, money is look, wasted. Look, we have a full cast of female writers. Are any of them competent? No. Yeah, not really. Well, we wouldn't use Hanlon's razor for uh, episode eight, but you know, there there are moments. Oh, for for episode eight, we know it was Mellis. <laughs> okay. The show, like most people I hear talk about it, but I didn't think it was that great either. The show also has little to no effect on the main story as well, so you really aren't missing anything by not watching it, and the characters are so forgettable. As much as most of us want the sequel trilogy to be retconned, notice no shading on the, the animation either. As long as Disney owns Star Wars, it will probably never happen. Now I know this has been getting a lot of controversy, but the Ray movie is probably going to be the sequel trilogy's last hope. <laughs> if they actually do a competent oh, job with no. the Ray movie. More like it's final nail in the coffin. A Ray movie? I thought that was a yeah. joke. Last hope. Oh, more like last. Ray more Ray like Ray last nail. More like last nail in the coffin. Nail the coffin. I thought it was a yeah. joke. No. She has a it's whole enough. fucking trilogy. Why do you need a movie? It's never enough. Yeah. Thanks. It's common like sense. That one meme <laughs> city, like so and so is getting their origin well, story. So and so is getting their origin story. Anakin. When am I getting my origin story? Anakin. The whole series is your origin. Well, because Kathleen Kennedy is a highly incompetent narcissist with way too much power who cannot be fired, apparently, because she probably knows about all the skeletons in the closet of, of too many people by having been the coffee girl for 50 years. She may have been and a so, couple of their escorts to Epstein Island. Oh, jeez. Well. And so she only, the only thing people like her ever do is double down and double down and double down because they insist that it must work, it just hasn't been done enough yet. That's how these people are, and that's how they are, how they parent their children as well. Well, if they do make Ray uh, a homosexual or whatever kind of sexuality aside from what she was previously, I am going to go see that film. If, if they actually smud, we well, smud, we already have the leaked image of Ray being pregnant. Oh, oh, really? Oh, oh. Yeah, that was ages ago. Oh dear. I thought she this gonna was be a the joke. next is gonna be the next Shmi Skywalker? <laughs> maybe, Seems like it. <laughs> maybe she is Shmi Skywalker. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut you up right Disney, there. Disney, don't fucking do that. That was oh, a joke. That's gonna be hilarious. For us it's a joke. For them it's a mandate. I th I thought the force could be whatever you want it to be. Apparently no, it's genetic as well. Oh okay. Well remember when what they said at the beginning of all this, the force is female. All right. The force is intestinal bacteria. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the light force, in, at least. It's not mitochondria. It's a different, it's totally different. Anyway, let's keep going. Some of the many, many wrongs of the sequel. Especially with the character of Finn. 
Hopefully they expand on his force potential in this movie and try to give some justice and respect back to John Boyega's No, character. then they can't sell in I China. I think that this movie is the only shot Disney has at trying to reinvest its fans in the sequel trilogy. And if it turns out uh, to be as no. bad as we all think it will be, I think Disney will just have to resort to sticking with the timeline before the sequels, like The Mandalorian and Andor, or start making more content in the High Republic and Old Republic era. When I yeah. think of projects that Disney oh. Star Wars Old Republic, that would we all hoped that the, that Disney would go for the Old Republic. Oh, did you guys hear the rumor? This was uh, last week, or not the rumor? The actual studio that apparently dropped Kotor the remake says it's still going on. They're still remaking it. So yeah. Uh, oh, did they fire all the SJWs, messing up the script and the characters? No, they yeah, probably fired all the competent well. people, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Well, I, I I thought that was a funny story. So everyone was sure it was dead, and then oh no, we're still working. I was like, really? Okay, we'll see. Yeah, but nobody's interested in this uh, the 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 Disney Republic thing. Oh, the High that Republic didn't sell. The, the, the old Republic, the cool the cool one with Darth Nihilus and everything. Yeah, that would have been awesome. And many people had hope that after after um, Disney bought Star Wars from Lucas, that they would go into that because there's this immense wealth of stories you can go for. And then Kennedy scrapped it all to have an excuse to make up this whole garbage with Ray. And then she realized, oh, oh, uh, I need to make money somehow. Um, um, oh, there's all this wealth of stories. Let's let's exploit that. Let's use that. Let's no, bastardize and, uh, that. It's all it's yeah, yeah it's they, bastardized into crap. They they just needed to cannibalize a lot of it because they are using ideas from the, the, the actual stories, but they are using them completely incompetently and in their own way. So everything has to serve the agenda. Oh, and we're supposed to Oh yeah, and then there's Star Wars Acolyte coming out where it show that's a hundred years before the Phantom Menace. That has a Sith. Lesbian. The Sith have been extinct for a millennia. Uh, I think you mean a century, because a millennia is a thousand years, you dumb... Probably yeah, more like a, like a decade a of a sabbatical. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there was a moment when I, I wanted Disney. a Bane trilogy. We all do. Mm. We all do. Yeah, well. They used to be cool. Notice notice the, the, the past tense. I want it. I do not want it anymore. Oh yeah, did uh, did Drew Carpishin uh, get paid off or something? What happened? No, no. What I mean is that if it were if it were to be made today, um, oh. it would probably suck. I see what you're saying. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only good Star Wars movies you can get right now are fan films. Sadly. Yeah, because the fans actually care. Because they're actual fans. Wars has made that are absolutely terrible. The first thing to immediately cross my mind is the Kenobi show. Although my goal for this video is to defend modern day Star Wars, really? any hate for this show is absolutely warranted. I dislike every aspect of this show, and I honestly think they did more disrespect to the characters in this show than they did in the entire sequel trilogy. Damn. Reva as a character annoyed me in this show because it felt like they were trying to make it her show rather than yes. Obi-Wan's show. They regressed yes, always. his character so they could redevelop him again in this show, which is extremely lazy. And his character was already well developed. Don't <laughs> even get me started with the Grand Inquisitor. With when it comes to Reva, they were trying to recapture what EA's respawn did with Trilla, the second sister. This cold, sadistic, disgraced Padawan becoming a high-ranking Inquisitor. Here's the thing. You had the second sister had a better voice actress to really deliver those lines. Oh, and EA's respawn is full of Star Wars fans who paid who paid attention. Also, just like how the Last Jedi with with uh, hyperspace, uh, the, the Obi Wan show broke one of the most fundamental rules of the entire Star Wars universe by having someone survive a lightsaber twice. I will give it, like, it, survive it once, you get lucky, fine. Not twice. Was this it the, just uh, lights now. Was this the back to tank solution? Where they just drop her in the holy water of rejuvenation and she's 
fine every we season. don't we don't know we don't know how she recovered well sarah remember the first time it happened she was a kid during order 66 Right, like specifically, I said, you want to say she survives that? Like, she get lucky, you miss a vital spot, and that's when you get inducted into the Inquisitors. A young and you young fall young over young while the lightsaber is in you, so that a, it doesn't auto-cut through you. I was going to say, a youngling is going to survive a lightsaber? That They're going to be that lucky? Of course, sure. no children died by Anakin's hand. That would be cruel. <laughs> Anakin was really quick with everyone. He didn't bother to, like... It. He, just, just, <laughs> he just he just stabbed them all very specifically so that they would all survive, oh. just like Reva. Visitor. Also, how the f <laughs> does a youngling get stabbed by the chosen one twice and survive? Yes, I can. Wait a <laughs> minute. Oh. As a yeah, th armor. this is my point exactly. Like, it's someone yeah. that Reva. This is my point exactly. A seasoned Jedi Master, one of the most, one of the Jedi Masters with the highest potential up to that point, he dies to it immediately. But then this bitch survives it twice in the well, same time. Immediately, point. but yeah, he, they got him. Yeah, 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 Maul got him. It's because she had put all her force points into health. Yeah. And healing. Like, right, as, right when I bring it up, the video brings it up. Thank you. I could rant about the Kenobi show literally all day. So if you want me to make a separate video on that, let me know in the comments down below. I feel comfortable with saying that most Star Wars fans would agree when I say that Dave Filoni has done an overall great job with like, handling of Star Wars. Uh, but I feel like he has sort of been missing uh, lately. More like lowest, oh. lowest bearable standard. Only with the Clone Wars and even then that's not saying much either. He never learned from his mistakes. Every yep. time he did a new show, he repeated all of the mistakes you thought he had grown out of by the end of the last one. Yeah. It, it, it's unbelievable. That man is unbelievable. He's the next George Lucas, an ego that's too good for his own... that's too big for his own good. I would trust George Lucas to actually be able to learn from his mistakes if he's actually told about them. So in regards to the whole fiasco with... Um, with the sequels, uh, with the prequels, he did seem to have learned from it. Whatever happened now, I don't know. Maybe it's just getting old and desperate. George is getting very old, yes. The assault, which he likely had full creative control over as Lucasfilm's chief creative officer. Also, I just want to say real quick, Dave Filoni ain't even the reason people like Ahsoka. The reason people like Ahsoka is because of Giancarlo Volpe. He was the writer, wasn't he? Felt like a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. Something just felt off about the Ahsoka show compared to the great things Dave Filoni has been known to make, like the Clone Wars and Rebels. The choreography was noticeably bad in this show, and in many instances. Like, sometimes it was so bad that I think it straight up ruined certain important moments of the show. It's like they're not even trying. Yep. Couldn't be buffered. Also, Ahsoka, another a person, once again, survives a fucking lightsaber stab right through the kidney. Oh no, that was Sabine. She still it's got been so many she still millions. got stabbed through the kit. She still got stabbed in the kidney with a lightsaber and survived like it was a flesh wound. They had to yeah. they had to retcon her to be force sensitive to do it though. Yeah. Like, they spent wanna... so many millions on this, well, but don't bother for the choreography. I, I think they implied she was force sensitive in Rebels. But it was only maybe, like it was only uh, like a like a faint idea, but yeah. they never did anything further than that. It's like maybe, but not quite. And then it's like, at the end of the first season, it's like, she's, it shows that she can kind of move the orange or whatever it was. Like, okay, it's there. She's going to get training. She's going to be, dedicate the next season to training her to be the next time. Enough, she does all the stuff because one. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So being getting qui gon and surviving is such a spit yep. in the face to Qui-Gon Jinn. You said it. What happened to the consequences of being hit by a lightsaber? It is almost like lightsabers in general have been nerfed or something. 
Although Sabine has been hinted to have a slight force connection in Rebels, it did not make sense that she was able to use the force to the degree that she did in the Ahsoka finale. I just said it! It seems like anybody can be a Jedi nowadays, mm. and Jedis are starting to become less special. Yep, that Initially, was the whole point of... Thrawn was quite the treat. That shit. But I feel like he was also nerfed in this show. Yes, oh, of course. Didn't because... feel as smart yes, of course there are wolves. Because he's written by idiots. Dumb mm -hmm. people cannot write intelligent characters. The original You cannot was... write a character that is more intelligent than you are. The only way you can pull that off is by having that character be a shadowy figure where you don't explain how he gets things done. I mean, with the original you can't give him too much screen time, you can't give him too much voice lines, because then the um uh then 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 the magic breaks. Make him stoic. The original Thawne was cold, That's sadistic, calculating, but had a passion for the arts. Disney Thawne, exactly he's just an art freak. Exactly. I would assume he didn't look like an old uh, chubby... He looks more uh, like Elon Musk than he does Thawne. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does look like Brent Spiner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, all the time I thought, like, <laughs> why did they paint data blue? <laughs> they, they, they ran out of white. Oh, what do we got left in the... the, the the palette, um, Don was red. A, Don was the high commander. He was an admiral. I and then he was he was cold, calculating, sadistic, and now he's just art freak. Again, the the thing I compared this to was a a similar situation happened with Hush from DC, where the only time Hush worked in any story was in his debut story in uh, from Hush Jeff Loeb story. in the Hush storyline yeah. by Jeff Loeb. Anyone else that has tried to tackle Hush is like, they missed the mark so much. Not the least of which in the Arkham series, but that's beside the point. It's a similar thing here with Thrawn, where it's like, like in, it only works in the better stories that everyone uh, uh, cheers on. And anything else, they're just that below the bar. Now Hush is Rebels and in Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy. There are too many moments in the show that feel so cheap and poorly written. Like, when the Ahsoka crew somehow dodges all the orbital bombardment while riding on those wolves or whatever they're called. <laughs> on a positive note, because I am def- That's, uh, that's, that's a, a rhyme to when, when the cavalry, um, charged across the Star Destroyer on X- <laughs> No, don't bring that up. Um, it's, it's rhyme, it's, it's rhyming, you know, it's like poetry. Like, here's what makes, well, like, somewhat makes sense because those- Cannons are designed for stationary targets, but it's a Star Destroyer. They have a fleet on that thing. It's the equivalent of an aircraft carrier. Do you know Send what the, what the firepower... Do you know what the firepower of the, the laser cannons of a Star Destroyer are? Powerful. That is orbital bombardment in itself. Yeah. If that thing shoots, it's not just this little poop thing. The, oh. the shockwave alone would be so big... That all these characters would fly across the horizon. Yeah, and even if they wanted to be more precise, they have an entire fleet on a Star Destroyer. Why not friggin' use it? That's just bad writing. Well, I do like the fact he is pointing out all the problems, or at least the ones that he noticed. And he's going to hopefully bring it back to some positives in, in defense of whatever he's talking about, because that's the title of the video. So there's some hope somewhere in here. We've so far had about, what, Six, seven minutes of uh, him just hating on it. So I'm like, okay, he's he's aware. It's going to be interesting he because very, the only good thing he can pull critical. is Andor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Star Wars one, one, one bit. Balance. I just I just thought about it. Elon Musk. I agree with Chad here. Elon Musk. If you imagine what he looks like, if you give him the evil chase makeup. He would be a better lookalike to Thrawn. He has the chiseled face and all. He has a horrible body shape, but he has the chiseled face. It would work. Okay, let's let's uh, Elon for Thrawn. Give him a, give him a shout. Ask a AIR to make a a blue Elon Musk, and then hey, isn't that Thrawn like? <laughs> anyway. God. Skull was probably the most interesting character in Ahsoka, and Ray Stevenson, may he rest in peace, stole. He died. Apparently, yeah, Ray's, Ray's, wow. yeah. He's a man. This was like this was like his last role. Jeez. Poor bastard. <laughs> oh, yeah. you meant the actor? Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. Every single scene that he was That's in. That's a sad thing to end I on. I also think Shin ha was well done as a character. The outcome of Ahsoka, which results in Ahsoka and Sabine being stranded outside of the Star Wars galaxy, gives me hope that they can make a similar story to Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy, leaving the Star Wars galaxy with basically just Luke and Ezra to defend it, which isn't too far off from the plot of the Thrawn trilogy. It was also great to see Hayden Christensen reprise his role as Anakin Skywalker I guess. in the Clone Wars flashbacks was it? in the world between worlds. I'm this was awesome to see, and the first time we got to see a Clone Wars flashback in live action. Another great thing that's happening, if you guys were unaware, is that a second season of Ahsoka has been approved. So another season of Oh great, another season of absolute boredom. Of just When nothing, nothing happens. Let's stare at a dungeon puzzle for 20 minutes. With the three buttons. Yay. Ahsoka is likely to Ahsoka is likely to be released in the future. I really hope they nail the recasting of Balin Skull. Because they I won't. feel like his story is far from over. Dave Filoni has been a part of a few other shows that I think most fans can agree were mediocre, like The Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian <laughs> Season 3, Resistance, <laughs> oh, and Forces of Destiny. Oh no! Forgot hold on, hold on. Yeah, no. I never what even discussed. I have explained <laughs> what I Forces of Destiny. I didn't know if Filoni really was on don't Resistance. I care about Forces of Destiny. Guys, come on. Sorry, what? Sorry, Sarah, what were you saying? I didn't know Filoni worked on Resistance. One of, of the course. first things, I guarantee, one of the first I guarantee, things they said. At this, point, at this point, I guarantee you, if it's a 3D cartoon, Filoni's had his hands on it. Okay, but at least with Clone Wars and Rebels, it started out decent enough. Problems, sure, but Resistance was just nothing. Cheap, lazy anime. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to rant about Resistance anymore. Bad Batch had more going for it. Bad Even though it was another... it was kept on the on the on the super kids level. Yeah, All right. that's one I forgot about. Actually, I've heard it's decent. It had its moments. Like, once you, if you, the the suspension of disbelief you have to get to is, it's written for six year olds, so the violence is toned down even further than in Rebels, but you still have some scenes in there, some moments where it's that's actually tough. Wait, what show? Sorry? Bad Batch. Bad Batch. Oh, okay. Thank you. Funny enough to even talk about it. So let's talk about why I think the book of Boba Fett was so mediocre. And before I start ranting about this... This is weird. He's he's just like 80%, if not 90% of this video is just him hating on all the Star Wars stuff he saw. Yeah, I'm just like... Maybe in defense of modern Star Wars was clickbait to get the normie fans to click on it I, and only realize it's, just, yes. it's a criticism. Well, yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, it's Star all coping. It's, a, it's all a coping mechanism. Well, I yeah, want to... He wants to defend it, but he's honest enough to say, <clears throat> to talk about everything that's wrong with it. Yeah, I want to get to the halfway mark and if he's still harping on everything, we're like, dude, okay, come on. Let's get to the actual right. points... But I say we just speed it up. How about no. that? Speed it up? No, no we don't need that right now. Um, right, I mean... Right. Has oh, anyone watched the video? I haven't. So I don't know what's in it, but I'm just... I sure. haven't I haven't watched this video. I haven't watched this video. I'm interested to see what he says. Yeah, yeah then let's this keep is, hit the is play is button. Very, this is a good point. criticism right. of modern Star Wars, so... Yeah. I just want to state for the record that Jon Favreau wrote every episode of The Book of Boba Fett, and he and Dave Filoni were both executive producers of the show. The book of Boba Fett had a great start in the first two episodes, where Boba is with the Tusken Raider tribe. It first worsens episode. after these episodes, and then the show gets Desert taken over by the good. Mandalorian arc, which should have been saved for the Mandalorian season three. Let's be honest, this arc was amazing and made many fans happy after a mostly disappointing. That was Kathleen Kennedy. She's the problem. She like pushed this Ranger shit in. What's with the Power Ranger, Ranger mobility scooters? Yeah, it's yeah. That was the Power Rangers. Kef that was Kathleen Kennedy meddling with the show. Right, uh, no, Power Rangers looks way better than this shit, you know? No, okay, fair the point, yes. Look at the but... freaking speeder's colors. Like, it looks like mobility scooters. No, 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 no okay. Power no, 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 Sheriff, know, we see but... it. No, no, hold on, hold on. We see it. We get what you mean. It's just that even Power Rangers itself wouldn't stoop this low. Well, and Power Rangers made on a shoestring budget. If if you remember the, well, the American footage, the meme of was it Boba? He spun around like three hundred and thirty degrees to take a shot. It was the funniest thing. <laughs> He's like <laughs> on his knees, He's like Wear! like what are you doing? Like what? What would you waste all that energy to to spin like a top? 
to shoot a guy that's just to your right. Anyway, that's all I remember of the show. Show about a who has gone soft and lost the qualities that originally made people like him. One of the episodes of this arc, Chapter 6, From the Desert Comes a Stranger, never had was written screen. by Dave Filoni. And I think it was easily the best episode of the Book of Boba Fett, but there is one small issue about this arc. It intrudes on a show that is supposed to be about Boba Fett, and it ruins the entire point of the Mandalorian Season 2 finale. In the Mandalorian Season 2 finale... Yeah, but nobody watched Boba Fett, so because it was, it was lame. It is and so he went back to, break. hey, let's make the thing that people actually watch. <laughs> People it want to see the book of Boba Fett yeah. while they get to see Boba Fett be the badass bounty hunter. Yeah. Yeah. In, that was in, nice. In the older you, Boba Fett did way more than just be a freaking bounty hunter, you know? There was one moment that no, I thought having was him be the bounty hunter funny. would have been nice. Yeah, just let Boba Fett go be a bounty hunter. Like, he's a bounty hunter. Yeah, do the thing I'm that the cool. Mandalorian didn't do. If you want the proper storyline for him when he is not exactly a bounty hunter, then you need to use the actual EU books with the concise storyline. Because yeah, you that, better, stuff, you better... that stuff had some, something in there. Yeah, okay, technically you better... he's a mercenary, he does more than bounty hunting, but at the end of the day, he's a hired gun. Yeah, but, yeah, but either way, if you're gonna have Boba Fett do something other than bounty hunting, you better have him as a general in the as of the Mandalorians during the Yuuzhan Vong War, and you better have him teaching have that. Luke Skywalker's kids. But it would have been cool. Yeah, of course it would have been, but we can't have that because we must make the Force female. Boba Fett didn't even a Force user. But we must make the Force female, so there's no place for the Yuuzhan Gong. Because then Thrawn would have to be competent. At least, but the Yuuzhan Vong are a legit cool threat. They're not light or dark. They're Did you not understand thing. what I just said? I understand what you're saying, Wes. And stop anyway. rambling. All right, we're at, is that nine minutes? Okay. I'm going to go for minutes. another three because, again, he's wasting my time. I want an actual answer. Luke Skywalker to be trained as is assumed to be first Padawan at the new Jedi Academy he is in the process of building. According to Jon Favreau, the Book of Boba Fett takes place two years after the events of Mandalorian Season 2, which means Grogu has been trading with Luke for two whole years up to this point. Personally, I think Jon Favreau made this up on the spot to avoid some backlash. Probably. Grogu reuniting with the Mandalorian would have been way better from a storytelling standpoint to happen in the Mandalorian Season 3 or the upcoming Mandalorian and Grogu movie. Let's be real. They definitely reunited Grogu with Mandalorian. They're making a Mandalorian three, movie. So they can keep making money off of him. Yep. This Mandalorian arc shouldn't have even been in the book of Boba Fett show in the first place. It took away from the already weak story they, they were telling play about with Boba the Fett. Tension and of those it episodes would have been better used as happening. Boba Fett episode. Yeah, I would guess that if there is an actual it movie need to being be a made, movie. you have a series. Um, but you need, but you have uh, fans that are willing to pay for it. Mainly yes. women who want uh, Grogu plushies. Just go buy a friggin' Grogu plushie! They're in fucking Walmart! No, they want more. That is not enough. They want more. That is how women just work. just make more! You don't need a movie to make more! <laughs> yeah, and they want to see the actor take off his helmet again. Ooh. Mm-hmm. He's bald. You don't understand women. I don't want to. I don't understand like why anyone thinks Pedro Pascal's attractive. I never understood that. I don't Same understand reason some he... people like Funko Pops. <laughs> that's mean. Zach I know. Yeah, that's mean. Touche. Touche. All right. The, I have the one fuck pumpo pumpo funk. <laughs> Whatever the fuck they're called. <laughs> I like is the you... fucking watcher from Horizon Zero Dawn's Funko Pop because it's actually Dia and looks like a little watcher figurine. Now I want to watch an anime called Pumpo Funk. <laughs> God damn it. Pitch you to Madbox, I'm sure they'll come up with something just based on the title. They can get Boogie Pop Phantom, they can do Pumpo Funk. <laughs> I don't care what these fucking things are called. All right, let's keep going. Mandalorian Season 3 was another show that Dave Floney and Jon Favreau were both involved in. Jon Favreau wrote every episode and Dave Filoni helped write two of the episodes, those being Chapter 20, The Foundling, and Chapter 23, The Spies. Both of those episodes had great moments like showing Grogu's escape from the Jedi Temple, Moff Gideon's reappearance, showing Captain Pelion in live action for the first time, and Paz Vizsla's epic death. 
This is another instance of Dave Filoni's episodes being I the forgot best all of, of that. Show. It is unfortunate that these two decent episodes that add quite a bit to the season are brought down by some of the <laughs> other episodes that are so mediocre. I wouldn't say season three of The Mandalorian was necessarily bad, but it was such a fall off from seasons one and two. There were so many stupid things in season three that just added up and brought down the show as a whole. Okay, so he, he good, did a good argument there where he's, he's cherry picking what he likes, but then he's going back to, this show is still bad. There's all these things in the mm -hmm. whole season, which is so bad. It's like, okay, you're going, you're getting somewhere. But yeah. you have to tell us what's the good and why and how that could work later. Not again. This doesn't feel like a defense. It feels like he missed, like he got the naming of his video wrong. This seems more like a critique yeah. of modern Star Wars, not in defense of right. modern Star Wars. I'm which telling is why you. I'm thinking he you named it this to get people to click on it, and then he's it's a heavy, it's a harsh critique. It's an accurate, well made critique, but it's a critique, not a defense. That could be. Yeah. See, if I were to taking the taking title seriously, <clears throat> I can think. I can imagine because he wants every, he wants the things to be good. He wants to like them, and he likes some things that are crap. That he's coping, but he's a real he's realistic enough about that. He's ob objective enough about it, and he clings to the cherries. Yeah. This is as if and, I'm, let's say, defending a, a science fiction like um, let's just use Mass Effect, like the first one. And I'll say, I hate everything, but I like the meeting with Vigil and I like the meeting with Sovereign. And that's it. If they would just do that in the second game, everything would be great. It's like, okay, but then how about the gameplay? What about the music? What about the this and the that? You have to give me a perfect piece of media that has all the elements. I don't say like every piece of music or every concept. Just give me the elements that you think are in defense of that are worthwhile and explain and show me why it can still be saved. Because if you don't do that, you're just listing all the crap in between, which is not why I'm here. So please give me the point of your video. And you, again, we're getting to the halfway mark. I will give this guy two more minutes, and then we'll zip to the end and see what he has to say, because this is not why we're here. Being brought back to be Grogu's exosuit. It was that such was a so weird dumb. decision to go with, and an interesting concept to give Burgu an exosuit, but I also feel like bringing back IG-11 at all kind of demeans his death in Season 1. I yes, like that he was praised for the town, and they built a memorial for him, but then they try to undo all of that just for it to not go well, and he becomes Grogu's exosuit. Chapter 19, The Convert, is an interesting episode about the it New was... Republic and Coruscant, uh... but this is another case where we have an episode that doesn't fit with the story. Don't even get me started with chapter 22, Guns for Hire. <laughs> Jack Black and Lezzo being in this episode felt so wrong, and Christopher Lloyd's character felt wasted. That the story was also dumb as hell. It's like, here's look, here's recognizable iconic celebrities. Here's the thing, if you're not going to have Jack, if you're going to put Jack Black in one of your properties, let him act like himself. Let him be this crazy, over-the-top goofball, and that's not going to work in Star Wars. Yeah. I would have, if, if you want to give him a role in Star Wars, have him be some crazy tinker guy yeah, who makes crazy contra guy. contraptions. Have him be this crazy droid, this dude that makes crazy weird fucked up droids that constantly explode. Yeah, for example, he could he could be the guy who um, in uh, I think it was in Rebels at near the end, um, the guy who designed the B wing turned out turned out. <laughs> He that was a that was a crazy obsessed like aeronautics guy. He could play it also made no inventor. sense because the B wing is actually not a fast ship. It's a, it's a slow he bomber. He could play the inventor who made a force sensitive droid. I forget the droid's name, but there's a force sensitive droid in a non canon story. <laughs> How about we don't talk about that because it's bullshit? Yeah, that's it's a droid. They don't have blood. They don't have <clears throat> a physical anatomy. They wouldn't. I know, that's why, it's a, the force. That's not how the force I know, that's why, that's I know, not that's how why the it's force works. I know, that's why it's a non-canon story. And apparently, the, in that same story, again, all non-canon, this droid willingly malfunctioned itself so that Luke could buy R2-D2. That sounds like horrible fan fiction. <laughs> exactly, it really that's why it's Burn it. Exactly, that's Burn why it, delete canon. it. Destroy it. Shift it. Delete. Into the fire. Shift delete. That, that is. Uh... To be fair, it's a com. To be fair, it's a com. I never want to story. hear about this again. <laughs> My God. You know, there's a non-canon comic story that's actually funny, where Han Solo and Chewbacca crash on Earth, and that's the story of Bigfoot. 
Oh, uh, yeah, it'd be good too. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, dear. Anyway. That whole scene with the B2 battle droid sprinting down the corridor was goofy and felt out of place. This entire episode felt like a Why side quest. Why is there a B2 battle the droid there? They would have been Because it was, it was filler. This is a common theme among many episodes in each of the Mandalorian seasons. In the finale, the Mandalorian is escorted by two stormtroopers, even though he is a massive threat. And only two stormtroopers escorting him to a cell does not make sense at all. Like, what is Moff Gideon think? Um, that all that all aside, this is uh, actually actually a good example. Um, because there happens, there's so little that happens in the Mandalorian, and yet they need, or because of that, they need to put in filler episodes with random irrelevant garbage. And you contrast that with Andor where every episode has something that develops it, where you have intelligent dialogue, where the characters make sense and are consistent. Maybe I should go watch Andor. Like, people are... I keep hearing people say it's good. They... It's a, it's, it's a show where they sat down and conceived of a, a small little culture on another world that actually makes sense that has its own little traditions and everything it's not just a set of here is uh tatooine on another planet with absolutely no substance it's an actual yeah. place with its yeah, own yeah. architecture its own its own um as i said little traditions re re revolving about work and death because that's all the life they have mainly that's what makes up everything and it's it's beautiful and as I said, every episode is filled with something. There's no filler because the writing is good. If The Mandalorian had been in the hands of good writers, it would have been the most amazing shit since the original trilogy. Since we Empire thought, Strikes Back. The thing is, we've had Star Wars properties shows have filler episodes. Star Wars The Clone Wars has filler episodes. You can skip them, but that's an well, that's an anthology. Yeah, but that has five series. that has like what five hundred episodes? Something like that. Well, it's also an anthology, so you know it's a filler episode, you can skip it, but if you watch it, it okay, here's R2 D2 and C three PO going on a goofy adventure, and this is how Cad Bane got the schematics to plan a bombing on Coruscant. Nobody would yeah. want to skip the Cat Bane episodes. Oh no, this is nobody would uh, want Cat to skip Cat these Bane's adventurous awesome. episodes because all the all the evil guy episodes are amazing. Because the writers could then go all overboard because you don't actually have a need to keep them alive. So any threat that they are in feels like actual stakes. Yes, but the whole point of the episode is three PO and R two are going after fruit because they've somebody forgot to pick it up for a party and that's how and they're kidnapped by cad bane and that's how they got the schematics for the friggin for a bombing on coruscant because 3po is incompetent all right all right we got another minute and yeah, we'll see. And, and, yeah and even even i'm oh, sorry you know what I'll, but it's I'll, funny I'll it. it's good it's up first of all it's a kid's show second of all it's actually funny to see these droids get on a misadventure due to the, due to three PO being fussy and incompetent. That's yeah, the whole even, Star Wars cartoon from back in the day. Even friggin' even friggin' Mandalorian when it's not doing a filler episode, it'll have filler scenes. Like I remember, like the season three premiere, it's got Din buying a specific droid. So he goes to the planet. He lets the droid out of the ship. It goes into the. It goes into this cave. He has to scan. It scans the cave. Then he has to lead the thing back to the ship. And like, why is this taking so goddamn long? Like, you don't. You didn't need the scene of him buying the droid. Just have him land there with a droid already in his possession. We can connect the dots that this is a. A mapping oh, droid. It's to give you a slow pacing and atmosphere to take in. It's fine. All right. Okay. Fine. If it's for the atmosphere, fine. But it doesn't need to be this drawn out. Like we don't need to see every single step taken. Anyways. All right. One minute. Assigning two stormtroopers is somebody who can take out like hundreds of them. What is the point of capturing him if he's just going to be freed at the start of the next episode so easily? Moff Gideon's entire clone project is also just shut down with basically no consequence, which just makes his entire arc seem pointless. My clone. Moff Gideon's clone army being put to use to fight the Mandalorians would have actually made him more of a threat. I also don't know how to feel about the Darksaber being broken, but maybe it's for the better. 
At least the fights were pretty I mean, cool. Be that rare. was pathetic. How easy that thing. The jetpack. How easy. That artifact that had so many stories about it was just broken by being squeezed like an apple. Was yeah, pathetic. That's, especially since it's made out of Beskar. It's made out of a lightsaber-resistant material that is very difficult to cut, break, and melt Beskar. So oh, if that droid, android, whatever the fuck it was, is able to break the, the Darksaber that easily, the Mandalorian doesn't have a hand anymore. I don't remember who said it, but one of us said that it can be repaired. That is true. It can be repaired at least. Nobody knows how it was made. Yeah, Never mind then. It's about it's a what lightsaber. a millennia-old artifact. Yeah, it's a yeah. I mean, yeah, it can be repaired, but it will never be the same. It's a lightsaber with a black blade. They don't. That even has know a specific why. form as well. It's an actual saber. Like they don't know how or why it's like that. It's a mystery in the Star Wars mythos. Yeah, it cannot be replicated. Because the only person who knows how to, how it was built, how it actually functions, is the one who built it. And he's dead. For quite a long time. Alright. <laughs> I mean, I just thought that was so cool. And also when Paz Vizwa fought. Yeah, as such, I want to I want to add to that, just to hit it home, the claim that, oh, it can't be repaired. Somebody said it could be repaired. That is bad writing. If you destroy this artifact, it has to be gone now. About the Praetorian guards, I mean, bro, that just that just got me hyped up. Like it was, it was so nice to see visually, and just the choreography was. And they all well, wait the part, for that. Which is rare to see with modern to be Star Wars, but I'll give it that. And as much as I see people losing trust in Dave Floney and his writing, I feel like his reason. low points are pretty much outweighed by his high points. And his high points are like as no. high as Mount Everest. I mean, come no, on, really? the man gave us Clone Wars, Rebels, Tales of the Jedi, and the Bad Batch. Do you do you have any? Have you forgotten all the absolutely atrocious episodes from the Clone Wars and Rebels? Unbearable, inconsistent crap. All right. yeah, the the show wasn't that. even told in chronological order. Even yeah, with it was that an just anthology going. series. I'm going to go to yeah. the 20 minute mark because you might have some ending crap that. Uh... Yeah, just quickly what I wanted to say is that. Even with what he uh, here uh, implies that his high points are very good, uh, people falling from grace have been a thing for quite a long while. So, Like George uh, Lucas. He might have had a good points. He might have had a high points in his career that might have ended. Yeah, as I said, he never learned from his mistakes. He developed during a show, but anytime he, he made a new one, he started from zero. He forgot all. He had a he had a level reset, back to level one, every time. It, I do not understand how how a man can function like that. It, it felt like Metroid every time he did that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Because at the right. at the start of every Metroid game, it's like, why does Samus Aran not cape all the shit from her previous adventure? Usually well, usually plot reasons. Uh, no, it's not, a, no, it's just we need to have a game. All right, all right. We're at yeah. the 20 minute mark. Uh, I'll give him uh, an extra two minutes, so four minutes in total. Um, let's go. EA also announced that they will not be making a Battlefront 3, which angered a lot of fans since it seems like the logical approach will be to make a new Battlefront game since they stopped nope, working. No, they went the back one. to the original. Battlefront 2 improved upon its predecessor. Oh, and the original. Them up. Had way more heroes to offer. It was more like the traditional Battlefield games, but I think that was completely fine for it. I mean, it was it made by DICE. It also a supremacy mode that was cool in regards to being able to board the enemy's capital ship and destroy it. At the same time, those games had the potential to last extremely long and become too time-consuming for the average player. The space battles were definitely a weak point, however. Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor were both great games that told the story of Cal Kestis nah. and had a lot of I liked Fallen Order, I haven't played Survivor. I loved how you- We lost Force Unleashed to those two games. I would like to see Force Unleashed come back, but I will say I thought it Fallen won't. Order was a fun game. It was it, fine. It justified. Like it it gave. It the the bug eyed woman was only there to justify the Force Awakens crap. You could customize his lightsaber and use different styles of fighting, especially in Jedi Survivor, which utilizes multiple fighting styles. 
The only issue with Jedi Survivor though was that it had a lot of lagging and crashing at the beginning of its release, which I I could not even play the game for like such a long time. Yeah, on the PC port was botched. Take a long break, and then later in the year I was able to actually play it because they finally fixed their damn game. Trip to the homie. This look like crap. Why did that Tie Fighter not crash into you? I think it was above him. Star I Wars demand Squad, that it crashed game, into it. I love that it went absolutely under the radar and just stopped getting developed not too long after its release. Squad because it was boring. Potential for competitive play and overall fun. The campaign was nice to play through as well, and it was cool to see the Starhawk be introduced in the canon finally. I really what? wish they kept developing squadrons and added more things, but sadly nobody plays it anymore, and I think it's safe to call it. Uh, can you tell me why all these games now? Are all canon, but the old games that Lucas also had was overseeing are not canon because they got retconned. Well, that's the problem. I think the Jedi. I think Jedi Starfighter is still considered canon. Somehow, <laughs> this is not. I think, a... yeah, I think, I think both of the Starfighter games on the PlayStation and Xbox are still considered canon. This is still not. They're so dis but they're um, yeah, Star Wars Starfighter and Jedi Starfighter. What? They survived. <laughs> yeah, I, I personally like them. I liked them as a kid. This I is think they're fine. This is still not a, right. a defensive Star Star Wars. He's just describing what happened to certain games, not why they're good, why they should be, keep going, or whatever. He's just again, it's this is a critique. It's a coping video. It has no this It's not really critique. Think, he, he is think... he's bringing up critique, but he's not making actual points in defense. Quit your bickering, birds. All right. What a deck. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga tried to improve on its Lego what? predecessors, and I feel like it did that nicely. The fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan on Mustafar, though, oh was really disappointing. Oh my god. And that stood out to me as like the that, most that, that has nothing to do with the topic. In that game, but everything else was a lot better Still than Star the Wars. Saga. And the game obviously majorly improved on visuals compared to the complete. So he's not talking about modern Star Wars, he's talking about Star Wars as a whole. Because yeah, even the even the spin-off joke games like Lego Star Wars are part of his justification. I mean, Fuck off, man. Yeah, the Lego Star Wars games were parodies of Star Wars. They're kind of goofy and silly kids' games. That's the Lego games in general. They're goofy. They're silly. <laughs> they're, they're more there to be a loving, a playful mockery of the material. Yeah. That's what Modern like Star Wars them. is indefensible because it is broken because of Disney's agenda and ideology, because of its possession, to put in all this ideological garbage everywhere. That is what broke it. And it is irreparable unless you decanonize it all. I like you to explore every world you go to. That's just something that it brings a lot to the game to have an open world aspect. And also there are a lot more characters, but where the hell is the character customization? Like, I still don't think they've added that to that game and you can only do it through mods, unfortunately. There are some games that were announced to be coming out in the future, like Star Wars Outlaws, made by oh, Ubisoft. Oh, I have some Ew. things to say Ubisoft about Star Wars, Wars Outlaws. First person shooter, which I believe was just- Which is canceled. To be canceled now, which is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and Quantic Dream Star Wars Eclipse. It was also just recently announced that the original Star Wars Battlefront games are being released on March 14th. <laughs> and will be featuring 64 person multiplayer lobbies. Which Ooh. Really excited. <laughs> Most games were taken out back into an alley and pissed on and left for dead. They were, ge they were given they were, the old Miller treatment. into the back alley, beaten and broken. What happened no, with those games good. is that, that since they fucked up so hard with the EA ones, they now decided to go back and spin the face of the originals too, just to break even. Oh, and the Star Wars Outlaws Ubisoft thing that's coming out. S the game, if you want all the content that's not locked behind paywalls in a $70 AAA game, you have to pay $200 for the deluxe edition. Yeah, where have I heard that before, DC? Ubisoft, you can go fuck yourself. I mean, they've they they've deserved that insult for more than a decade at this point. Well, again, not not a defensive. That's never been that fucking egregious. This is not a, a positive thing you want to be talking about. These are all negatives. So I want to 
I'm gonna get somewhere with this video. Star Wars has been in desperate need of a multiplayer game recently, after the death of EA's Battlefront 2. So this revitalization of the original Battlefront games, which most fans agree are the best Battlefronts, is a step in a good direction for Star Wars. Nope! One of these games that I am anticipating the most is Star Wars Eclipse, but a lot has been happening around it recently. I am pretty sure it was cancelled or delayed indefinitely last year, but recently it was said to be back in development, which is a good sign, but it's probably a long time away from being released. I think a game that Star Wars would really benefit from would be a GTA style open world game kind of mixed with No Man's Sky one. where multiple people what? fly all around the galaxy doing they were whatever making and one. can have whatever occupation they want, like a Jedi, Sith, bounty hunter. So a mobile game, or sorry, a, a multiplayer online game, like with- Bro, that's Swotor. Yeah. Swotor lets you do that. You want, you yeah. want, a, you want, a, sand, you want a Star Wars sandbox game? I don't a Star Wars... uh, that right. existed. It was called Star Wars Galaxy. Yep, it was pretty good until they decided, oh, this World of Warcraft thing is really popular. Let's overhaul the entire game and make it into a World of Warcraft clone. And that's when oh. they lost all the Calder customers. Oh yeah, was that the one where it's like you had to work your ass off for to become a Jedi originally, and then they just yes. made it a starting class in the overhaul. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah. For example. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. That was that was bra brain dead if I've ever seen it. I knew That's a guy a who was a, was a Jedi in that ge in that game. And the problem with being a Jedi in that game is that you are automatically the target of everyone, and your entire guild constantly needs to defend you. So the Jedi is actually shit. You know what? That whole the, the, the treatment of the Jedi uh, class in that game before and after the overhaul is a microcosm of how Force sensitivity is working now because of Disney. Before you had to, they had so a character had to work their ass off for it, and now yeah, it's, yeah. it's just a handout. Yeah, it was it was a it was a reward achievement, if you will. And um, uh, for anyone who plays Eve Online. In a very, in a much more simplistic way, that's what Star Wars Galaxies was on the ground. Everything yeah, was right. self-made. The towns were self-built. It was beautiful. I've done what I done, guys, and just play Swotor. Okay, one more minute. Okay. Anyway, I was a farmer. Honestly, this is probably just massive copium, but one can only dream, right? At least the events. Guys, I hope this video has helped to convince everyone watching that there and good storytelling give us an example what are I you mean, talking maybe you about over it. maybe you skipped over it on the second half of the video yeah, but probably most not most of, most of what we heard from you was you pointing out all the problems with star wars and being heavily critical of their dumb decisions if you to have the fault of disney if you have a 24 25 minute video and you have a premise saying or or initial idea saying i'm going to defend Modern Star Wars, I'll take games, I'll take movies, I'll take shows. You say, great, here's my premise. First 20 seconds, that's what I'm doing. And then the first minute you say, evidence number one, this is my example of a video game. Evidence number two, here's my example of a video, a movie. Or whatever. Evidence number three, here's my example of whatever. Like That's what you give me. And then in between there you say, this was bad, this I didn't like, yada, yada, just to explain that you know what a good and bad thing is. And then you keep going. Not, I didn't like what Dave Filoni did with this show. It's like, that's fine, but that's not why we're here. That's not what you set your, that's not what you posit. How can I put this? I'm losing my words. This is not, it's not, that's not what you proposed your video as. You were putting forward a defense, but you gave us a criticism. Yeah, this isn't in defense of modern Star Wars. A better title is the reality of modern Star Wars. Yeah, if you're yeah, like, that's Let's just, just check on the bingo card that um, not the title. Yeah, if, if you're a fan of a thing, like let's say you're a fan of the Batman series or the Batman video games or pick anything Batman, and you say, I'm going to say what I like about the Batman animated series, right? You say, great. You, you make a list of all the things you like, animation, episodes, characters, whatever, and then you talk about them. That's all you have to do. You show clips of the things, you examples, and that that would be your video the the good parts of batman the animated series great that's it that's all you have to do with this type of video and sadly i mean the argument is not an argument it's just a listing of grievances and peppered in there is like i like this part i like that part you're like great 
I'm sure your holistic experience of a, of a video or a video game or whatever was, was wonderful to you and you had your, your problems with it. But you have to give us what we're here for. And you need an argument to go with that and I didn't hear one. And even if it were somewhere in the minutes 15 or minutes 19, I don't care. It's disjointed, hard to follow, and not what you do. Anyway, uh, we're done. So we don't have to continue. I'm sure he says a bunch of other stuff or maybe he's selling something. Oh, the show sucks. Trying to play Jedi Survivor without crashing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough. Uh, he has Star Wars Again, experience. Again, th- this, is, this is in no way a defense. Again, this is just the reality of what's going on. Yeah. It kind of seems like that slightly disillusioned person just talking about <laughs> their favorite hobby it's like buyer's remorse yeah. <laughs> i mean hey it's like the more people we can turn to the side of common sense the better all right well so now our but, uh, you're watching... it wasn't necessarily a bad video it's just it's not a defense it's a criticism yeah, yeah. Out the Mr. problems Narf... in modern star wars that's not a Mr. bad thing to talk about but Mr. don't Narf... call your video a defense if it's a criticism it not makes it. Mr. Narf Boy, if you're watching this, just rename the title of your video. That's all. Yeah, just it would it would at least be more it, at least it would at least be more accurate than what he's got right now, yeah. What so memes? Yeah. Ever just... the method actor, Adam Driver had his arm amputated for his role Lucky Logan Lucky. He felt this movie justified it as likely that in Star Wars movies, he would also be losing his hand, a la Anakin and Luke. Is this real, or is it a uh, No, it's just because of... It's a Photoshop. Okay. This picture like, of Adam Driver what? just looks like it has his hand cut off. You have enough properties! This is mine! You took my only source of income! No, now no, no. I'm gonna go bankrupt! Yep. That yeah, is that is Disney in a friggin' nutshell. Yep. I say let him go bankrupt. <laughs> That's a little disturbing. Uh, some people's definition of toxic, yeah, okay. SJW's definition of toxic? Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to read that, but... The mostly yeah, straw man. It's just straw man arguments saying... Yeah, pretty much. What, uh, what the straw man's, what the, what the SJW's say. This is, the and then universe. there's the art in question. No, they're not straw men of what the SJW's say. The SJW's claim that... That's just what they say verbatim. Oh, yes, the, yes. yeah, the, the same And that's the fan it. art that caused Steven Universe fans to bully a girl into attempting suicide. Which, uh, Force like Awakens was a decent movie. movie, but because of The Last Jedi taking a shit on the whole franchise and The Rise of Skywalker being nothing memorable, the whole sequel series is never worth He's watching not. ever again. These are too many one. memes that have nothing to do with the video. Oh, oh, right. The power, the power to save Padme. The power learns. <laughs> just a bunch of Star Padme. Wars movies. Padme is saving power. That power? Okay. <laughs> and they're just a bunch of Star Wars memes. This? Yes. What? That's what? what I said. I, I'm trying to look. This is your mother. <laughs> trying to wrap my brain around this one. Wouldn't uh, Anakin uh, be a... sad about this? Not uh, Palpatine. I'm not sure what's going on here. So the the, the the Palpatine uh, Anakin one. Well, it's the this is a scene from what uh, Hercules, I think. <laughs> That's uh, uh, Emperor's, Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove. Okay. Like the coos, the potion, the poison, the poison for Cusco. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Let me ask mom what she thinks. Oh, wait, that's it. Go to your room. My room was on Alderaan. <laughs> that is great. That's good. Luke, this is your mother. <laughs> Dark Vader with titties. Jeez. That's actually pretty funny. That is yeah, it's a I like I like that there's a cutout for the uh, buttons and stuff, so that mm-hmm. the oh yeah, between... <laughs> a lot of work went into that. Uh, Darth Vader breathing ten hours, two point seven million people. Interesting. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you are the leader, lead designer of the Death Star. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> because those kids can make damn near every anything in an afternoon. Yes. 
So the Clone Wars movie, season one, season two, and first half of season three. Star Wars, the Clone Wars, second half of season three, season four, season five, and six. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Right. Did it really go downhill right. that early? No, it gets down, goes dark that it gets dark. Okay, dark. dark. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it, that's where the quality goes up because season one and two okay. are barely watchable. Okay. They're, they're it fine. starts getting they're... watchable by season three. I mean, and season then, one and two are decent enough for a kid's show. No, season they're three... not. They're right. not. You have rose tinted glasses on. Maybe. Rewatch it, you will barf. You will Maybe. get eye cancer as well. And you will have to watch the, the, the Jar Jar episode. I can skip the Jar Jar episodes. You cannot anthology. skip the Jar Jar episode. You have to watch the Jar Jar episode. Yeah, I'm you saying must. I can skip them. Deal with it. You claim no, the you season is know. good, so you must watch all of the I Jar Jar episodes. I said yeah, decent. To. Still have to watch You it. think Jar Jar episodes are decent. You must watch no, them. I never, said they were, I never said those were decent. You said the season is decent. Decent enough, not as a whole. You say it's decent enough, you must yeah. watch the Jar Jar episode. You must. That's, you that's have a to. bad argument. This is you will not get around this. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Search I your feelings. I'm going to get around it. Look at me no, go. No, no, no. Search your feelings, sir, if you know it to be true. <laughs> Simply put. Oh, no. How did... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! All the fan, all the fan art. Okay, he is here. I can sense it. I got, I got some use for that fan art. Oh yes, I do. Is Star Wars the one with the little little wizard boy? I mean, kind of. Wizard boy, yes. Little, uh, depending on which one we're talking about. Aren't you a little small for a stormtrooper? Well, all wings check in. Red three, red six. Why should I blow up this planet? Because it's full of hippies. I don't like them. Red buttons, red fox, <laughs> big red, red October, Helen ready, <laughs> simply red. Okay. Red, the, the, red, the, the star, the, the friggin' family red guy squadron. Star Wars. Red, red squadron, yeah. But when I first saw this, Red October is the one that got me when I first saw this. Look, we got four of the five main characters on this ship. I think we'll be fine. Or at least on screen, yes. Oh, yeah, that shot. Okay. <laughs> Ciao, buddy, Griffin. The Phantom <clears throat> Menace. Now, that could be the little, the title of a porno or a fairy tale. Let's find out. <laughs> People in Star Wars who are smoking hot. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. <laughs> They are smoking, got right? That, you still got that smoking bag is. I gave you? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Cleveland being R2-D2 was pretty funny. Harder, Daddy. Oh, my oh. God. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. I don't think anyone... That's not how he says it. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Exactly. That's how I always said it. <laughs> Many chlorians are the power. I never watch Futurama. Of the force. <laughs> ah. Well, no, well, no. I saw the clip like once, and then I misremembered. You saw the clip I... just once. I saw Dude, watch Futurama, watch you the uncultured whole... child. Go watch Futurama right now. Oh dear. I don't, My I'm fine. A minor grammar mistake. <laughs> what is going on lately? Nobody who's seen Lord of the Rings. Nobody's seen Futurama. What? What? Where are yes, we? No one has to. No one has to see everything. You have to see the good things that are cultural artifacts that are yes, fucking good. Yes, that, yes, right. that are timeless. Yes, there, are just, there are just some things that most people don't care to see, and that's fine. Well, you don't great. even know it exists. Why I've are you even here? Why should you I've... care that Star Wars exists? This is great. Huh? I've never seen Lord of the Rings. I try. I like I, every it. time I try to watch it, I get bored and stuff. Oh, that's me in Star Trek. Oh. Star Trek is just so slow, I can't watch it. Okay, now I know you have a you have a two digit IQ. Oh my god! I mean, I just don't care about Star Trek. I don't have interest in it. <laughs> this is so <laughs> mean. Me on, <laughs> me on my way to a Lizzo concert show. <laughs> now that's me on my way away from a Lizzo concert. Oh come on, that's not nice. Honestly, Luke with the lightsaber over Ben Solo. Har, so this har. prank's gonna be great. Okay. Thank you, right? <laughs> oh God, that scene makes more sense than the one in the movie. It does. Yeah. I had a bad dream. Got to murder my nephew. Oh, 
Master Yoda, how did the dark side win Anakin over? Never know, we might. How old did you say you were? Ten. Ten? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, well, to, and to be fair, in that context, Padme was like 14 at the time. It's still iffy. It's at still weird because it's Natalie Portman. Well, like, get an like, actual child to play your child queen. Also, what comic is this from? It looks like a, a Lego comic. Uh, one of the, it, it, it is Lego. Disney, like you know those Disney gold book stories of their movies? They did one for Lego Star Wars. Oh. Wait, wait. Wait, no, no. I'm pretty sure Lego just does that themselves. Like, Disney, what, 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 Disney whichever. Disney because it's a, because what? Star Wars is a Disney property now. Well, 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 whichever it was, it was like yeah, putting the Lego Star Wars games into book forms. Like this apparently is what Anakin does to the younglings in Lego Star Wars. So it's a book based off a video game, based off a toy, based off a movie. Okay, the so rebels have right, the rebels have roller. no means or intention of forming a stable government to govern the galaxy. The Galactic Republic, which romanticizes, was a corrupt bureaucracy that had failed. To fulfill basic functions of government, it failed because Example, of Sith, a oh, fucking Sith, military. It failed because of Sith corruption. At, on top of that, well, corruption just as a fucking whole. Well, um, well, as well as the Jedi Temple being built over a Sith temple. Yeah, it was built a over Sith a Nexus. dark side force nexus, thinking they yes. could contain it. Exactly, that's hubris. Oh yeah, this. <laughs> It's Shaggy. Shaggy. It, 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 sh Shaggy. 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 And yes, that, I'm, I'm fairly. I do believe that was a Scooby Doo reference. In, it, in, it, 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 no, th this was in the Gendy Tartakovsky yeah, uh, yeah. Clone Wars. This was entirely intentional. Shadow the Hedgehog's favorite lightsaber, the dark saber. Oh God! I oh, just. I said you skipped ahead. Yeah, I'm a little bit ahead. We'll get we'll get there. Uh, there. Calcatron went oh. through a thermal detonator and killed fifty stormtroopers. Then the thermal den then the thermal detonator exploded. Katarn. We lost Kyle Katarn to this shit. God damn. Mm -hmm. We lost so yeah. much. For me the funniest thing about like Kyle people, Katarn is like that. The, the... Sorry, God. Yeah, the, for me the funniest thing about Kyle Katarn is that I remember him from uh, Jedi Academy and me and my friend had a brilliant idea to put the uh, language of the dialogue in I think Spanish and the entire game sounded to us like a Latino telenovela. <laughs> It was they forced to play another bland human protagonist to Star as, Wars open world as Spanish, games. And a Spanish speaker, I can absolutely see it playing out like that with that change, honestly. But I'm just like, I was like, yeah, I was gonna say, I, was, I lost, I had it and I lost it. Damn. I would like to see Kotor in Spanish. That, that'd be sounding pretty cool. I am a Skywalker. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. I am a Skywalker. I'm, I'm a Skywalker, Master Luke. Eh. Oh, wait, oh no! Yeah, I was gonna say it's like uh, some of the shills to this day saying that like decanonizing all the Disney stuff would be too much. Uh, that's a dumbass. That's literally what they did with the EU. They, it's they can I do. Will hear no more of this consumer nonsense. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the two women. That's the, uh, that's uh, are, are you smart? On the left, that's the that's the face model, and on the right, that's the character they based off. Outlaws. Of her. Yeah, that Funny. is the Outlaws. character going to be in Star Wars Outlaws. That's your protagonist. Oh, uh, okay. That's a um, very different take on. <laughs> okay. It it seriously looks. She looks like the offspring of two siblings. Thank you. Oh yeah, this was uh, uh, RoboCop. The RoboCop game, what was it called? Rogue City or something? Um, I've heard Rogue City is actually pretty good. Came out a few months ago. It is, yeah, yeah because it's by, made by people who give a fuck. You want to buy some copium? <laughs> like, look at the, 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 because they literally skinned in the, 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 they made a, in, in a uh, well, not one to one, but they made it a, a replica of the face of the lead female character from the movie as close as fucking possible. That's a man. 
It looks like no. It looks like the offspring of two siblings who are in. That a is a man. Look at the fucking chin. Oh, I know, I know. That's what's been going on. But seriously, just because of how deformed they had to make it, it seriously looks like the product of incest. Well, to sum it up, that they're calling the character Ma'am Solo. That should say everything. <laughs> yeah. They... The wig looks as if it's from a drag queen. That's yeah. all, all I'm going to say is, I'm so glad Honestly. that I pre-ordered Stellar Blade, because it's just making Twitter cry. Yes. Oh, I played the demo. It's actually pretty fun. It's a hack and I... flash that plays like a Souls-like. Uh, and reminder so that the game... So it's unforgiving. Reminder that the fun. game... Yeah, yeah. Reminder that the game had a Steam version ready to go, but as usual, Sony, with Wish its greasy is. fingers, with the exclusivity... Wisp, there's the droid. There's the droid. Oh, my God. Do you want me to throw you into a wall? Yippee! You're gonna you're gonna have a long you're gonna have a long travel to go do that. This is a thing. Right? Oh, it's amazing. I'll use the Funko yeah. Pops as yeah. fuel. All right, all right, all right, Let's, all right. Turn it back a notch, guys. Seriously, bro. Use the Funko Pops as fuel. Anyway, yeah, I can't believe this is a thing. That's amazing. Oh yeah, That's... oh this is, this is it. The, the Skippy the Jedi droid, really? Yeah. Was this EU? Like... Was this was this EU or was this Disney? I don't EU, know. but non-canon. EU, but non-canon. Well, non-canon so because so it's just there for fun. Well, non-canon yeah. because Disney threw it away. Now it's extra non-canon with a twist of lemon. Uh, it's, I'll you take. Know, I would accept this as canon over whatever the hell Disney's doing. Oh, you know what? This, this I... is a fun idea. Yeah, okay, yeah, despite my doubts about it, I'll take Skippy the Jedi droid over the sequels, at least. Uh, mainly because that kind of makes me think of the friggin' astromech droid in Rebels that's got a mat that's got a kill count in the fucking thousands. I'll take Skippy uh, the Jedi droid. I'll, 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 take Skippy Chopper, the Jedi yes. I'll take Skippy the Jedi droid. I'll take Skippy over the droid from Solo. Okay, so you know what? I actually liked this droid from Solo when I thought it was ironic. When... But no, it's not. I wish it was ironic because when you think when you take it as ironic satire, it's fucking hilarious. That's what that's what Skippy basically is. <laughs> and make, right, honestly, Skippy always. the jo the Jedi droid makes me think of Chopper from Rebels, just a fucking astromech droid getting <laughs> what was it T one blasters the stormtroopers use. I don't remember the standard issue for the stormtroopers. All right, well, that was. Uh... I mean, we've heard a lot of things we've already known or heard before from other critics. That's fine. And uh, it's a strange way of forming an argument because you're just listing grievances and you're trying to find something good through your ramblings. And unfortunately, it's not the, the quickest way to get to the solution. So what you would normally do is you expose all these ideas you have on paper. You go, wait a second, what am I trying to do then you focus on that and you eliminate all the stuff in between. And that's what he should have done. He, again, all he has to do is change his title, as you guys said, to My Grievances with Modern Star Wars. Like, great. It's a, either, my, either Grievances with Star Wars or the reality of modern Star Wars. One yeah. of the two. Sure. Yeah, that would work. Because it just, this wasn't a defense. It was a criticism. Yeah, pretty much. Well made for the most part, but it's a criticism. Yeah, he's clearly a fan. He likes the stuff to a degree and as fans of anything especially star wars there's lots of problems nowadays so that's totally fine doing so is healthy getting it out of your system and telling people what you think and that's fine I, i'm all for it just give me a good title give me a good reason as opposed to just being a fanboy because usually fans are just positive positive everything's great everything's amazing and that gets tired very quickly so that's not a fan that's a tourist well I, I'm nothing wrong with, with being critical and especially Star Wars has so many issues and this guy just went through games and movies and, and shows so he knows what he's talking about to a degree and if only we just a little bit more focused I think it would have been totally but, fine. He has to figure out the nuances yeah, and the with, reasons why. But yeah, we agree with you that modern Star Wars has a lot of problems. Yeah. All right, well, that was, uh, I mean, we haven't done Star Wars in a few months i think so it's always nice to uh retread i, know, I think the lot that we did star wars a couple weeks ago when we were reacting to the guy roasting all the disney shows well more than more than a few more than a few weeks but yeah 
it's been a while. I can't recall, but yeah, no, it's it's been a while since we've talked about uh, the Last Jedi and a few other films. And, ah, yeah, we've we've talked about this for a while, so it's kind of like all right, we know we know the issues. Fair enough. So can't disagree with the guy too much, but uh, just just wanted that clarity. Just wanted to focus, and they would have been fine. So anyway, thank you, Nerf Boy. Thank you guys for the suggestion. That was a nice, relaxing Saturday for me. And I'm just going to go get some tea and relax. It's nice. Uh, the weather is, is actually not bad. It's been crazy where I've been living. Windy, just all kinds of rain. Very bright outside right now for some reason. I don't know what's happening. I mean, it's it's April. Almost, uh, yeah, it's called it's spring. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's, it's pleasantly warm in the day. It's cool at night where I live. It's nice, pleasant weather when it's not a torrential downpour. I just need more sleep. Oh, I don't know. Roll. I think the rain is keeping me up at night. I don't know. <laughs> the rain keeps you up at night, puts my ass to sleep. I know. I, it, it must be something to do with my exercise routine, or I don't know what's happening, but I've been I've been awake, so I need more sleep. Maybe we'll take a nap or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for the suggestions. We'll talk to you soon. If we don't see you tomorrow, we'll see you on Monday for Anime Day. And have yourself a great evening. Good night. Goodbye. Have a wonderful nice. time. May the force be with you. <laughs>